It gives me particular pleasure to introduce this event and John Pilger to you this evening because we've developed a little bit of a tradition here at BFI South Bank um, in having advanced screenings of his works, uh, either before transmission uh, or before they go out into the cinemas. A uh, majority of his films since we were calculating this morning, possibly even the end of the 80s or certainly the early 90s, have actually been previewed here in this very cinema. So uh, it's really nice to be back again uh, with the latest of his works. John is, I would say, one of the most incisive documentary filmmakers of our time. And his relentless pursuit of truth and justice across the globe have led him from days as a war correspondent, notably in Vietnam and in Cambodia, through reports on injustice in his native Australia, uh, for example, with the secret country, uh, to works of truly international relevance, such as his first film for cinema, um, The War on Documentary in 2007, um, and Thinking of the New Rulers of the World, which emerged in 2001, when just the term globalization was only just starting to come into our language and uncovered a whole new area uh, of politics for us to be considering. His films have had an effect on international policy making. Uh, Death of a Nation broke records with an unprecedented number of calls uh, on its transmission uh, on the help helpline number that was available that evening. Uh, and it was credited with influencing the subsequent United Nations investigation into the massacres there. Uh, so his films have real impact. Peter Bradshaw on Friday described The Dirty Wall on the, U on the NHS as a fierce and necessary film. It comes to our screens at a crucial moment in UK politics and policy making. Uh, and John has said it goes to the heart of the struggle for democracy today. So to give you more context into the making of this film, The Dirty War on the NHS, is my great pleasure to introduce its writer, producer and director. John Pilger. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, it's, uh, it's so good to be always at the BFI, and especially in NFT1. As Maggie said, it's, I think we've been I've been coming here with films since the late 80s, and it's, it's really the high point, I think, of all the work that goes into making a film for it to be shown here at the BFI. So thank you to you and to Jonathan and all my other friends here at the BFI, and thank you so much to all of you for coming tonight. Um, I should, and not should, I really want to mention my colleagues. Perhaps it's something of a cliche to say that films aren't singular works. Uh, for instance, my, my uh, partner in crime, Joe Frost, the editor of this film, Joe and I have been making films together since Death of a Nation in the early 90s and uh, uh, I couldn't have made this film without Joe. He's a brilliant filmmaker and uh, he's here tonight. So thank you, Joe, again. Uh, <coughs> and uh, Owen, the, uh, the cinematographer uh, and whose brilliant work, I think, I, I don't think I've worked with a, uh, a cinematographer who has uh, expressed a film uh, and has taken such, <laughs> it's taken such a personal interest and has been so personally committed to it as Owen. Uh, Emily, Emily Keane, who is the assistant producer of the film, uh, has done superb work. And uh, again, it would have been difficult without Emily. And I should say, perhaps most important, 
are my friends and colleagues at Dartmouth Films. Dartmouth Films, founded by Christo Hurd, and which he runs with Matt Hurd, it's a wonderful father and son combination, and they uh, run uh, an organization that gives voice to documentary films, and often documentary films that are cast aside by the system, television and others. So uh, it's their backing, too, that I have so valued. This film is really about privatization. That's a rotten word. I hate it. I've sat trying to think of other words. Uh, capitalism, uh, exploitation, whatever. But it always comes out as privatization, greed, ownership, and the way it, way it has insinuated itself aggressively into so many areas of our lives. Uh, this is a film I've wanted to make for a very long time because the insidious way that privatization has attacked uh, the most beloved institution in this country, and rightly so, the National Health Service, is something that we all kind of know about, but we're not sure about. What, what is it? What is going on here? Why, why is the health service in, in crisis all the time? Uh, why do the tabloids feed off it's stories of uh, people, patients on trolleys and so on. It's true, patients are on trolleys. The health service has been cut back, deliberately cut back in my view, to now to the lowest bed capacity in Europe. Uh, since the coalition government in 2010, 17,000 beds were lost. Uh, so, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no margin at, at all now. Just in the paper this morning, a third of health visitors have gone since 2015. Uh, for all of Johnson's nonsense about that he's going to give 50,000, bring 50,000 nurses back into the health service, the fact is that the Royal College of Nurses says 40,000 nurses are needed uh, the, the, almost the contempt for this public body is so intense and ideological by those who have led it, the attacks on it, and as the film will demonstrate, I hope, go back to the Thatcher era. This, it, it is a contempt because it's ideological and it has to do with class the great unspoken word. Um, the, uh, the, the latest uh, revelations that uh, were produced, I think, by Jeremy Corbyn last week of, uh, of the uh, so-called trade talks that were leading up to the arrival of President Trump next week uh, have... Uh, uh, have produced some interesting documents. Let me just read Changing Glasses. Uh. This was a this was a discussion between the Department of International Trade and the United States Trade Representative uh, about a year ago. Uh, and the US, uh, now remember these discussions have been denied by the government. They weren't happening, Johnson has said. Uh, the NHS certainly was not on the table as Theresa May said when Trump embarrassed her by saying that right next to her uh, when he was last here. But in fact, there have been secret discussions. And when the US Trade Representative uh, 
raised the whole question of this outrageous situation. There is a publicly owned body called the National Health Service, um, and uh, it's not at all like the American system. Uh, the, the British trade uh, official said, wouldn't want to discuss particular healthcare entities at this time. You'll be aware of certain statements saying we need to protect our needs. This would be something to discuss further down the line. Now, what the official is saying, that regardless of the fact that the British government has given assurances, like protecting our needs, protecting the NHS, that there will be a discussion further down the line in other words, well after an election. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the most striking cases of the sort of routine uh, duplicity that, uh, that, that, that has come to be part of, and perhaps always was part of, but it seems to be much more vivid these days, of public life. Uh, so, Privatization and the privatization of the health service uh, means the privatization of almost everything else. And we've seen that, even privatization of the law, so that we will have uh, a judiciary that only responds, let's say, to the one or two percent at the top. And I'm seeing this as I follow the Julian Assange case already. So, taking it broadly, the whole ideology of privatization becomes something that uh, attacks all of us. But I won't say any more because this is, um, this is probably the most important, uh, I suppose, attack of all on a health service which touches the lives of every one of us. Um, it's also, I have to say, a film that, um, having made many films in other countries, that I wanted to make, uh, giving something to my adopted country. So the film has a particular meaning for me. Thank you.